Saint Augustine commentary on Psalm 44, following from verse 15 until the end. My shame is continually before me, and the confusion of my face has covered me. Verse 15. For the voice of him that reproaches and blasphemes. Verse 16. That is to say, from the voice of them that insult over me, and who make it a charge against me that I worship you, that I confess you. And who make it a charge against me that I bear that, may, that name, by which all charges against me shall be blotted out. For the voice of him that reproaches and blasphemes, that is, of him that speaks against me, by reason of the enemy and the persecutor. And what is the understanding conveyed the, here? Those things which are told us of the time past will not be done in our case. Those which are hoped for as to be hereafter are not, yet, are not as yet manifest. Those which are past as the leading out of your people with great glory from Egypt, its deliverance from its persecutors, the guiding of it through the nations, the placing of it in the kingdom whence the nations had been expelled. What are those to be hereafter? The leading of the people out of this Egypt of the world when Christ our leader shall appear in his glory. The placing of the saints at his right hand, of the wicked at his left, the condemnation of the wicked with the devil to eternal punishment, the receiving of a kingdom from Christ with the saints to last for ever. These are the things that are yet to be, the former are what are past. In the interval, what is to be our lot? Tribulations. Why so? That it may be seen with respect to the soul that worships God, to what extent it worships God. That it may be seen whether it worships Him freely, from whom it received salvation freely. What have you given unto God? You were wicked and thou were redeemed. What have you given unto God? What is there that you have not received from him freely? With reason is it named grace, because it is bestowed gratis, i.e. freely. Romans 11.6 What is required of you then is this, that thou too shouldst Worship him freely, not because he gives you things temporal, but because he holds out to you things eternal. All this is come upon you, yet have we not forgotten you. Verse 17. What is meant by have not forgotten you? Neither have we behaved ourselves forwardly in your covenant. Our heart has not turned back, and you have turned aside our goings out of your way. Verse 18. See here is understanding in that our heart has not gone back. That we have not forgotten you, have not behaved forwardly in your covenant. Placed as we are in great tribulations and persecutions of the Gentiles. You have turned aside our goings out of your way. Our goings were in the pleasures of the world. Our goings were in the midst of temple prosperities. You have taken our goings out of your way and has shown us how straight and narrow is the way that leads unto life. Matthew 7, 14. What is meant by has turned aside our goings out of your way? It is as if he said, 
you are placed in the midst of tribulation. You are suffering many things. You have already lost many things that you loved in this life. But I have not abandoned you on the way, the narrow way that I am teaching you. You were seeking broad ways. What do I tell you? This is the way we go to everlasting life. By the way ye wish to walk, you are going to death. How broad and wide is the road that leads to destruction, and how many there be that find it. How straight and narrow the way that leads unto life, and how few there be that walk therein. Matthew 7, 13 and 14 Who are the few? They who patiently endure tribulations, patiently endure temptations who in all these troubles do not fall away, who do not rejoice in the word for a season only, and in the time of tribulation fade away, as on the sands arising, but who have the root of love according to what we have lately heard read in the Gospel. For you have brought us low in the place of infirmity. Verse 18 Therefore you will exalt us in the place of strength, and the shadow of death has covered us. Verse 19 For this mortality of ours is but the shadow of death. The true death is condemnation with the devil. If we have forgotten the name of our God, here is the understanding of the sons of Korah. And stretch out our hands to a strange God. Verse 20. Shall not God search this out? For he knows the secrets of the heart. Verse 21. He knows and yet he searches them out. If he knows the secrets of the heart, what do the words, Shall not God search it out, do there? He knows it in himself. He searches it out for our sakes. For it is for this reason God sometimes searches a thing out and speaks of that becoming known to himself, which he is himself making known to you. He is speaking of his own work, not of his knowledge. We commonly say a gladsome day when it is fine, yet it is the day itself that experiences delight. No, we speak of the day as gladsome because it fills us with delight. And we speak of a sullen sky, not that there is any such feeling in the clouds, but because men are affected with sullenness at the sight of such an appearance of the skies, it is called sullen for this reason that it makes us sullen. So also God is said to know when he causes us to know. God says to Abraham, Now I know that you fear God. Genesis 22.12 Did he then not know it before then? But Abraham did not know himself till then, for it was in that very trial he came to know himself. And God is said to know that which he had caused him to know. Did Peter know himself when he said to the physician, I will be with you even unto death? Luke twenty-two thirty-three. The physician had felt the, his pulse and knew what was going on within his patient's soul. The patient knew it not. The crisis of trial came and the physician approved the correctness of his opinion. The sick man gave up his presumption. Thus God at once knows it and searches it out. He knows it already. Why does he search it out? For your sake that you may come to know your own self and may return thanks to him that made you. Shall not God search it out? For, for your sake, we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Verse 22. 
For you may see a man being put to death, you do not know why he is being put to death. God knows this. The thing in itself is hid. But someone will say to me, See, he is detained in prison for the name of Christ. He is a confessor for the name of Christ. Why do not heretics also confess the name of Christ, and yet they do not die for his sake? Nay more, let me say it in the Catholic Church itself. Do you think there either are or have been wanting persons such as would suffer for the sake of glory among men? Were there no such persons, the Apostle would not say, Though I give my body to be burnt and have not charity, it profits me nothing. 1 Corinthians 13.3 He knew therefore that there might be some persons who did this not from charity but out of vain glory. It is therefore hid from us. God alone sees this. We can see it. He alone can judge of this who knows the secret of the heart. For, for your sake I will kill all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. I have already mentioned that from hence the Apostle Paul had borrowed a text for the encouragement of the martyrs, that they might not faint in the tribulations undergone by them for the name of Christ. Awake, why sleepest thou, O Lord? Verse 23. Who is addressed and who is the speaker? Would not he be more correctly said to sleep and slumber, who speaks such words as these? He replies to you, I know what I am saying, I know that he that keeps Israel does not sleep. But yet the martyrs cry, Awake, why sleepest thou, O Lord? O Lord Jesus, you were slain. Thou slept in your passion. To us you have now awaked from sleep. For we know that you have now awaked again. To what purpose have you awaked and risen again? The Gentiles that persecute us think you to be dead. Do not believe you, ha you to have risen again. Arise thou then to them also. Why sleepest thou, thou not to us yet to them? For if they already believed you to have risen again, could they persecute us who believe in you? But why do they persecute? Destroy, slay, so and so, whoever have believed in you, such an one who died an ill death. As yet to them thou sleepst, arise to them that they may perceive that you have awaked again, and may be at rest. Lastly, it has come to pass while the martyrs die and say these things, while they sleep and awaken Christ, truly dead in their sleepings, Christ has in a certain sense risen against in the Gentiles, i.e., it becomes believed that he has risen again. So by degrees they themselves becoming converted to Christ by believing, collected a numerous body such as the persecutors dreaded, and the persecutions have come to an end. Why? Because Christ, who before was asleep to them as not believing, has risen in the Gentiles. Arise and cast us not off forever. Wherefore hidest thou your face, as if you were not present, as if you have forgotten us, and forgottest our misery and trouble? Verse 24. For our soul is bowed down to the dust. Verse 25. Where is it bowed down to the dust, i.e., dust persecutes us? They persecute us, of whom you have said, the ungodly are not so, 
but are like the dust which the wind drives away from the face of the earth. Our belly has cleaved to the earth. He seems to me to have expressed the punishment of the extreme of humiliation, in which, when any one prostrates himself, his belly cleaves to the earth. For whosoever is humbled so as to be on his knees, as yet a lower degree of humiliation to which he can come, but he who is so humbled that his belly cleaves to the ground, there is no farther humiliation for him. Should one wish to do still farther, it will after that point be not bowing him down, but crushing him. Perhaps then he may have meant this, we are bowed down very low in this dust, there is no farther point to which humiliation can go. Humiliation has now reached its highest point. Let mercy then come also. Arise, O Lord, help us. Verse 26 And indeed, dearly beloved, he has arisen and helped us. For when he awaked, i.e. when he arose again and became known to the Gentiles, on the cessation of persecution, even those who had cleaved to the earth were raised up from the earth, and on performing penance have been restored to Christ's body, feeble and imperfect though they were, so that in them was fulfilled the text, Your eyes did see my substance, yet being imperfect, and in your book shall, shall they all be written. Arise, O Lord, help us and redeem us for your name's sake, that is to say, freely. For your name's sake, not for the sake of my merits, because you have vouchsafed to do it, not because I am worthy that you should do it unto me. For this very thing that we have not forgotten you, that our heart has not gone back, that we have not stretched out our hands to any strange God, how should we have been able to achieve except with your help? How should we have strength for it except through your appealing to us within, exhorting us and not forsaking us? Whether then we suffer in tribulations or rejoice in prosperities, Redeem thou us, not for our merits, but for your name's sake. Verse 27